Hi guys. Um, so today we're gonna do a video on the question count digit one lead code two thirty three, and a difficult question. A difficult part about this is really understanding uh, how the algorithm works. And before we start, uh, this video is is not really a promo or anything, but like um, basically. I promise you, if you go to my website, laogo.versel.app, the domain may change, but the link will be in the description. You search count digit one, make sure you sign in so you can get your past records. And you practice this space repetition using this technique. I promise you that if you do it, the maximum we can do right now is 15 times. If you try it 15 times, okay, until you can completely memorize the algorithm and you're able to think of what's going on with each test case as you're typing it in your sleep, I promise you, Ah, uh, you see, okay, wait, hang on, and you and you don't ever have to look at the answer. So the percentage hidden is hundred percent. So now percentage hidden zero percent. Now it's going up. And if you do this now, okay, first of all, this is not a promo for this app. I'm gonna actually explain to you how this algorithm works in this video. So don't worry about that. But like, if you do it ten times, fifteen times, however many times you do it, I promise you, you will be able to understand how exactly this algorithm works and implement any version of it. Not any version of it, but this version of it in this website in in this uh in this uh, uh thing here so uh, I, i'll explain exactly how this algorithm works and i have to credit my understanding first to this solution that was published uh, not not this one sorry this solution here that was published as well as space repetition that you can perform here and you know looking at the stats looking at my progression improvement from uh this is the last five records but like if you look in the in the last 10 20 records you will see that i actually went from looking at the answer to hiding it like most of the time to hiding it almost all the time and to completely hiding it and now I actually understand how this solution can work. I'm not saying that you need to memorize algorithms, no, you should aim to understand it but let me explain how this works. Okay, I know the video has been going on for about two minutes now and um, I haven't actually explained how this question works. So first of all, let's take a look at the question. Count the total number of digit ones appearing in all non-negative integers less than or equal to n. So an example is 13. So 13, there's 1, 12, there's 1, 11, there's 2, so now it's 4, 10, we're up to 5, 2 to 9 has 0, and 1 has 1. So now you already start to see some patterns, right? Okay, and the key pattern that I need to note here is this. What we're trying to do in this algorithm, we cannot do it in linear time because it's 10 to the power of 9, and basically if you try to do it in linear time, uh, some of the uh, digits might be like up to 10 digits, and there might be a lot of that, so 10 times 10 to the power of 9 is obviously 10 to the power of 10, and uh, you know, if you do it a few times, like, you know, it could easily be like 20 times 10 to the power of 9 or something like that. And basically, there'll be a time limit exceeded. So you have to do it in uh, in, a, in a way that, that is much faster and in pro probably logarithmic time. And what you're going to have to do is to break down the n into uh, sub-cases and use some kind of uh, recursion or dynamic programming, however you want to do it, and basically cache certain values. So you need to recognize patterns in terms of how many... Uh, how many digit ones are in certain ranges of, of, of numbers. And the key to understanding this is also understanding how you calculate the number of digit ones. So you can see in the example of 13, whereby there's six, that even though, uh, if you really look at it, uh, certain numbers have more instances of one, right? So, uh, okay, so there are certain cases right now. Right now, if it is zero, number of digit ones is zero. So that's like a, a simple base case that we can just uh, rule out. Okay, so if the remainder of a number is zero and we have to calculate it by dividing, so the only way we can really break down the number n, if you think about it, is that we have to divide it down to break it down into quotients and remainders and then run our algorithm on the quotient and remainder until we break it down into the, the most fundamental base cases, which is zero or one to nine, right? Because zero, then you know it's zero. One to nine, you know that the answer is one. So if you break it down, every number can be broken down into that eventually. But would that be sufficient in telling us how many digit ones appear? No, look, let's look in the case of 13. So we break it down, okay, it's 10 divided by something. We don't even know what that something is. And then you get 10 and 13. Maybe let's just say for every number, you try to find the nearest base that is lower than that number. So in 13, the, the case of that, the lowest base 10 is uh, 10 to the power of one, right? So maybe you can take, okay, so for 100, it's um, 100 and for 200, it's still 100. For 10, 20, 30, 99, it's all 10. So you can start to see some patterns that the base can be 10 to the power of the length of the digit minus 1. So 10 to the power of 1 is 10. So let's just say 15, right? It, uh, you can take base 10. So 15 divided by 10, you get 1, right? 
So, okay, now we have that number. And now we have, uh, now we have that number. And now we have that, that's the base we can use. Right, so you, you break down the quotient. Uh, then the 15 divided by 10, the quotient is one, remainder is five. Right, so remainder five, you use this, the base case that we were talking about just now, whereby n is lesser than 10, you get uh, one instance of one appearing. And uh, that's for the remainder. For the side of 10, then we, 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 we divide by 10 again. You get a, a quotient of one, remainder of zero. So now you take the, our base case, our base rule of value one to nine. So you get now one. So now you get two. Two, that's pretty good, right? But that's not really correct. Because in the case of 15, the number of uh, output is actually eight, right? Uh, but yet you only have two, right? So you think about our base case of like, okay, if n equals to less than or equals to zero, then you return zero. Else if n is less than 10, return one, right? It's not really sufficient. So there's another value that we need to get, we need to extract from a number that's also related to the base. So in the case of 15, the base was 10. 15 minus 10, you get five. But is that really correct? Okay, let's simplify it a bit. Let's, let's say it was 10, right? And the base is also 10. So 10 minus 10, you get zero. But that's not really correct because 10 in itself uh, has a, a, a value of one. So the remainder was zero, so you'll give zero. But 10 minus 10, well, doesn't give back the value of one, which you absolutely need. So the answer in this case should have been uh, 2 because uh, 0, 1, and also 10. So, well, the previous uh, value we gave here, n is less than 10, can still work basically because um, we reduce it by 10. And, uh, sorry, okay, so basically what we need to do is we need to reduce everything into n less than 10 and n less than 0. So what you can do is you can minus 1 from 10, okay? So then that can be nine, and then you can pass it into count digit one again, and then, then you can get a one. But the 10 and the 10 needs to somehow generate a one. So could it be, okay, let, let's uh, define a variable called one in base, the number of ones in the base, uh, and then let it be zero. And if, um, if n divided by, okay, wait, wait, wait. First of all, let's, let's, Let's break down the, the values of n properly. So let length, which is basically gonna be the length in the strength of n, and then let uh, the, the base, which is gonna be math.power, 10 to the base of, uh, to, the, to the length of let uh, len minus one. So for example, in 10, this would have been uh, math.power 10, length minus one, which is two minus one, one, so it would be, be 10 to the power of one. Okay, next, we let's create an answer which is basically uh, pass int and uh, end over uh, base, right? So in the case of 20, this will be two. In the case of 10, this will be one. In the case of 100, this will be uh, one as well because the base in this case will be 100. Next thing we need to do is remainder because we need to calculate that. So we basically need to run our recursive algorithms on the answer and remainder, but then we need to add something else to it. So remainder would be n um, base. So we need to find a pattern that works, right? right? So we're just going to call this value one in base, which is going to be zero. And effectively, let's just say for, simpli for simplicity, the one in base. Okay, so for 20, we're going to be able to reduce it to uh, the base, which is 10. And we're going to deduct one from it, so it's nine. Then we're going to multiply that by answer, which in this case will be two. Then we can, oh, calculate the, the ones in from zero to, from, yeah, from zero to nine. Uh, for the two sets of tens within 20 as well as any remainder in this case is zero but we still need the set of one in base from 10 to 19 which will not be calculated because they have an extra uh, value of one just by starting from one right uh, and in the case of 10 you also have the extra value of one so what you need to do is if one in base equals to answer uh sorry equals to one wait hang on um before that though if this is the case for 20 then what we just need to set it to is uh one in base basically equals to base uh base sorry 
So in this case, the base would have been 10, so that's correct. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 10 to 19 is 10 numbers, right? But you're still not considering the 1 and the... You're not, still con not considering 11 and you're not considering 1. How do you consider it? Okay, um, basically, when you consider the quotient, uh, which in this case will be two sets of nine, and the remainder, which in this case is zero, so it will be two times count digit one of nine, which will return one. Now, however, one in base equals to one. Let's just say in this case, the answer was 10. What do you do? You basically set one in base to 10 minus, so n minus the base, which is going to be zero plus one, because you just need that value of 10. It starts from 10. If it was 14, same thing, or 11, same thing, right? Because 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, they all start with 10. They all have that one. So 14 minus 10 plus one is three, uh, four, sorry. So which is 10, 11, 12, 13, hey, wait, sorry, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 is five. 14 minus 10 is four plus one is five, my bad. So anyways, that's the one in base. So those are the three values you basically need. The one in base, as well as breaking down the, as well as running count digit one again recursively on the quotient and remainder. So, okay, I know this explanation might be slightly confusing because uh, base minus one because you want to make 10, 9 or 199. Uh, and it is, and I really apologize for that because the intuition be behind this algorithm is oops, going to be a bit complicated to understand anyways. So yeah, let's see. Let's run it first. Okay, we had a wrong answer. Output 12, expected 6. Hmm, let me see. Where did I go wrong? If 1 in base... Sorry, not 1 in base. If answer equals to 1. My bad. Okay, great. So I believe I got it correct. Let's submit this. And we got it. Okay, so space complexity, fantastic. Time complexity, not that great. But okay, anyways, yeah, I did it once about an hour ago. It was accepted as well. But anyways, that is the explanation. It is slightly more complex, and there's really no real way for you to really grasp the understanding well in a video. What you can do, however, if you want to speed up your ability to understand this algorithm, or any algorithm for that matter, is to go to this website. Okay, and this is really terrible. But anyways, come to here, this website here. Okay, let me refresh the page. Oops, sorry. Okay, uh, not submit, but go to the actual website, sign in, okay? There'll be a sign in button here, and then choose count digit one from the drop down. There, there won't be any past records for you because you don't have anything. And then just repeat this, maybe say five to 10 times. Click repeat, start typing, records will show up here. Hide the answer when you're confident. Type fast, reduce mistakes, and I promise you, you will develop the intuition for this question. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye.